And we're back with another Starbase Summary for October 16th through 18th, 2024. Team was out in the field gathering what was going on once again at Starbase, kicking it off over with the Chopsticks carriage. Remember, if you'd like to answer the question, what do you hear with nothing but the rain, you can click the audio settings and change to the ambient track instead of hearing the commentary. <laughs> Problem is, I don't think there's any rain in this video. But either way, heading over to the production site, closer to the production site, I guess, we've got Ship 31 in the high bay, continuing tile works there at level 21. You can see a little placard that says what level of the scaffolding that is. Star factory and office building, still not filled in here on the end. They've done a lot of work in this area, but we haven't seen them put the, the walls, I guess the curtain walls, some of you in the viewership would like me to call them. Since they're not part of the structure of the building, they just hang on the sides. But a lot of work there on the office building, waiting for that SpaceX logo to go up. Over at the OLM, the over the launch site, I guess, down the OLM, the chopsticks, had a couple close looks of how this ended up after the in infamous, that's not the right word, after the catch. And it's looking pretty good. It's going to be very curious to see how much turnaround time they need to get ready for the next flight. There's the chopsticks. You can see they're largely intact from this shot. Not seeing a lot of scorching. There's a couple shots where you'll see a little bit of a scrape on the steel newton catch cushions whatever where the ship made contact with the chopsticks as it was caught sort of up at the top right hand side of the chopsticks in this view but uh, they're doing inspections looks like he's got a little welder up there with him on that one person for scale wearing a nice red shirt or jacket up there at the top of the chopsticks you always like the people for scale in the shots. I know we say that all the time, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's true. That's why we say it. We've got some scaffolding up around the top of the OLM. That's the top deck of the OLM. And the work here is going on the booster QD in the background there. Mary gets us a shot of the piping on the OLM. Here going up one of the legs and going around the OLM to deliver the consumables, the propellants up to the ship. I guess up to the booster in this case ship would go up the tower and over on the ship QD arm, quick disconnect arm, the big one, a little over halfway up the tower that swings out to connect to the ship. There we've got a dumpster filled with s scaffolding, <laughs> the label tells us, being lifted up. Again, when they put in the scaffolding, it means they're going to be there for a little bit instead of using the temporary lifts. To move around, they can put up scaffolding as uh, safety barriers or ways to get to different levels. There's the ship QD arm that I was talking about. That's the one that swings out, and you can see the little alien chest burster thing that sort of leeches onto the side of the ship whenever the uh, ship is up here to put the propellants in and out of the ship. I guess you could say that for, for the booster, it's in and out of the booster, because after you catch it, you put it down on the OLM, you need a way to drain the remaining propellants out, and so you connect the ship QT to it. Here we've made our way over to Pizza, it looks like. Pizza? Pizza? Tower's leaning a bit. There's a lot of really interesting YouTube videos on how they tried to straighten the leaning tower of Pizza, but whatever. It's not Pizza, I know. Moving over to Pad B. Got the clouds moving along in the background like a flock of sheep. Very moist sheep. That doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean. The clouds are made of moisture. They're moving in the background. They're fluffy like a sheep. Most of the time sheep are more dirty than fluffy. Speaking of animals, here's a bird looking for a snack. Now we're going to have to identify that bird. We're going to have to look it up. I was trying to think. It, looks, it almost looks like a, it's not a cattle egret, but it looks like one of the birds that hangs out with the cattle. I, I do not believe that that's what it was. Tell me what y'all think it was down in the comments. Moving back over here, we've got more welding work. That was grinding, it looked like, because it was spewing sparks up in a direction. Yep, you see it spewing the sparks. That's not welding. Welding makes like a shower, like a sparkler, and grinding makes like a line, like a firing line of uh, sparks but just continuing preps on the pieces that they're working on. 
over here. Secured with some crane straps up there at the top. More shots from Mary of the tile work. Zooming in a little bit. Really wonder, I really, really do wonder, and this will be easier when the ship comes out of the uh, bays, how they're going to fix that burn through that we saw on the flap on the last flight. There were still sparks and plasma coming through the junction of the, the sort of the root of the flap where the root or the flap meets the ship body. Right, right there. There's the big part where the flap meets the ship body and exactly how they keep uh, plasma, heat, airflow, whatever you want to call it, from getting into that gap and burning that out. Ship still made it down fine, though. Looks like we need to inspect what's going on there. There's the nice stable staffle, scaffolding, and there's the uh, arm of the aerial work platform, the white on the left-hand side, sort of shaking in the wind. You can see the wind moving it around, or the person in it moving around. And we've got a pipe delivery. Always exciting day when we get a pipe delivery at Starbase. Now this says work continues on the OLM, but this time for Pad B. I'm assuming we're looking over at the production. Wasn't that? I mean, it wasn't actually labeled. It's paved all the way in. There went a security truck. There's the booster transport stand. You can tell that this is the uh, the Sanchez area because you've got the shipyard in the back of the shipyard. The rocket garden in the background. So continuing to work on this. Here we're hopping back over. This saw a couple clips of this earlier. This is the ship QD arm under construction for tower two slash B slash Bravo beta part do whatever you want to call it. The other tower. Now here's the original OLM back to the launch site. A lot of folks working around there. I wonder if it's more inspections or repairs, right? I wonder which one of those things are the primary task here. If we had like a, a pie chart, maybe, is it 80% inspections, 20% repairs? I'd really be curious to know that. But there you can see see the uh, the catch pads? There, thank, perfect. Uh, I didn't even know that was gonna happen. The chopstick pad damage, you see where the little catch pads got scraped and there's a little discoloration right in the middle. Look how close to the middle there, yeah. Enhance how close to the middle of the, the chopstick catch area that scrape is. Half centimeter accuracy? I mean, it's right there in the middle of the chopsticks. A lot of folks, on the other video where we analyzed the, uh, the landing accuracy of the Falcon 9s, a lot of folks pointed out that the drone ships on the water, and even though they have the station keeping thrusters, they're still variable. The th station keeping thrusters can keep the ship within a matter of uh, feet or meters, right? Like single digits, but still the ship, the drone ship, moves around more than the tower does, right? So the tower is not really going anywhere. Here's the other side, and you can see where the booster sort of scraped down it as the tower chopsticks made contact, bounced off just a little bit, then made contact again. In the ship, in, or the ship, the booster slid down and caused these uh, scrapings. But these don't look like they're crushed or, or unusable again. Like they look like they're pretty good. Up on the QD arm again, the cables going twang in the foreground. I'm trying to see what's it. Is that like a little brush? It almost looks like a toothbrush, but certainly it's not a toothbrush. It's like a little wire brush you use to clean something up is what that looked like to me. You can offer your opinions below. Here's the alignment pins going back in. These alignment pins are what they use to guide the booster into position. Now, they didn't need it when they restacked the caught booster. Landed booster. It's, you got to call it the caught booster, right? It's not landing. It's a catching. So they're putting those back in. I guess it just makes it easier to stack a new booster, even though they're not absolutely needed. That looks like a crane part. Rolling down the road, being tracked by one of our remote-controlled cameras here. 
And have a time lapse of the chopsticks moving around. Elevator going up and down the tower. There's the chopsticks opening wide. Elevator goes up. This is going to be looking out to the west. Looks like D caught this one. Sunset in Boca Chica. That's going to be Highway 4 going back towards Brownsville. Here you have Brownsville sort of behind you. In the distance, you can see South Padre Island, the condos on South Padre Island. Here up close, of course, the two mega bays and the rocket garden. More shots of the chopstick carriage, but it's somewhere in here. Yep, there you go. There's a subcooler. Uh, are those the hippos? They look like they look like big animals, but we couldn't quite see it all there. Moving around. There's the ship cutie arm again. There goes <laughs> there goes the cooler in the foreground. I like it. It's like a soon sort of thing. There's a chopstick cable chain. You see these on uh, 3D printers and uh, CNC mills and stuff like this. These sort of flex in, is it really, it flexes in one axis. It's moving in two dimensions, or really three dimensions, but it, it keeps cables in one axis as an arm goes back and forth, right? Sort of protects those uh, cables and hoses, whatever you want to say, in that axis so they're not flopping out of the way. The SpaceX logo there on the edge of the cooler going by. There's a power pack and a driving chair on the SPMT. Excavator working in the background. Time lapse a little bit there because we saw the clouds jump. And here comes another one with a SpaceX logo. I don't know if it's a blind, right? Would we call it a blind or is that just like a flange cover or something like that? It looked like it was not a permanent installation. It's not going to hold any pressure. It's just to keep out FOD. All right, we got a lot of angles of this. Look at this. That's actually really cool. It's like, it's not a 3D printer, all right? But it's like a massive, it's like a massive uh, cable chain for a 3D printer or something. The procession of new parts moving down the road. Living our tomorrow today, Starbase, nice. There's a lot of little things like this you see around Starbase uh, art on the side of the road. Rocks that have been painted. There's a little bench here where you can contemplate the universe or the future of humanity. Got a low angle shot here from D. Very cinematic. No tripod involved, right? D is just holding this one and gives it that little uh, cinematic motion shake. If you've seen some of the behind the scenes cinematics the D has done for us. It really is fantastic. If you saw the last Starbase update, there's a big section in there. Last Starbase update? What day is it? Yeah, I think it was the last Starbase update. There's a big section in there that's a D sort of shooting behind the scenes cinematics. More work continues on the OLM. The tower base getting some paint. Or coating. A lot of people like to correct it and say, no, it's actually not paint. That's actually a coating they put on there to protect it. The difference between a coating and a paint is... Uh, well, you know what I mean. Something that, that covers it. There's the chopsticks, and you can see there, again, the two scrape marks. There's one of the scrape marks on the... the facing at the left side from the tower's perspective. It's the right side. Is this tower right? Ship left? I wonder if there's, like, stage right, stage left references. There's the, from our perspective, right-hand chopstick with its scrape mark nearly in the middle, maybe a little close to the inside. I guess you could count the, the catch pillows, the cushions. Got some footage of a hose being lifted to the OLM. Is it a hose that needs to be replaced after launch? Were they going to replace it anyways? Only SpaceX knows. Another nice wide time-lapse shot there. We're going to jump back to the tile work once again. Wearing a protective bunny suit. Probably more for uh, painting or coating or uh, working with uh, you know, fibrous materials. You're cutting things. They're going to put fibers or something in the air, so you want to protect yourself from getting it all over you. You take off the bunny suit, toss it, or clean it separately or whatever, right? Some detailed work. I want to know what the shirt says. Is it a SpaceX-related shirt, or is it, like, from a bar in South Padre? I don't know. 
We've still got test tank 16 in air quotes. We haven't caught a proper label on that thing. Maybe it'll be scrapped. But we keep putting it in quotes because we haven't seen it actually labeled that just as the way numbers go. That's what it would be. This is a cool shot, but I appreciate the crane moving in the background. Like, <laughs> SpaceX never sleeps. They're always going there. We're going to get a moonrise behind Starhopper here. And the clouds, different layers coming in. But that is going to be it for this Starbase summary. Appreciate y'all as always. Quite a few people with the last one almost got 200,000 views. We do these twice a week here on the channel. We do a little bit of narration, expl explanation off the cuff so you know what's going on inside my brain as I watch it. But my name is John, and I'll see you nerds later. Thanks for watching.